Lovely, lovely, lovely. Welcome, one and all. Noreen, Michal, uh, to all our friends, old and new, joining us today, this very auspicious day, this day honouring Bridget, the triple goddess and saint and patron saint of Ireland and patron saint of all poets, healers, and seekers of great wisdom. We're so honored to have you here. Uh, I am today we are gathering to celebrate Bridget and we're also gathering to launch uh, the beginning of what we're calling the inner soul circle. We want to do this every month. It's too good to be true. We have to come back every month and gather here together and celebrate these great seasonal turnings. And so we've the three of us here, um, but this does not happen on its own. I want to introduce to you uh, Christine here, uh, who's from the lovely Garden State of New Jersey, and Cormac McCarthy over in the deserts of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Christine and Cormac will be answering any questions that you might have uh, in the background and they've been helping us put all this together. So, so grateful to have Christine and Cormac's energy here. We couldn't do it uh, without you. And so I am very pleased to formally announce the opening of the Inner Soul Circle. Cormac will put the link here on the chat and you can be perusing that and signing up as we spend our time together. Um, and if you have any questions at all, you can just uh, direct a message, Cormac or Christine, or put your question on the chat. And yeah, today we're going to be diving into what Bridget has to teach us. Um, but before we do that, I want to read a little Celtic blessing from Noreen's uh, latest extraordinary uh, piece of creativity, this book of ritual that she just released a bestseller in Ireland has yet to be released around the world. But um, uh, we, we were watching with glee as it was on the top 20 list of bestsellers in Ireland be between Britney Spears and uh, other other people. And here's a lovely Celtic blessing, which is the last prayer in the book. And I'm going to start us off with that. And it says, oh, king of the tree of life, the tree of life. The blossoms on the branches are your people. The blossoms on the branches. We are the blossoms on the branches. The singing birds are your angels. The whispering breeze, your spirit. King of the tree of life, may us your blossoms bring forth sweet fruit. May the birds sing out the highest praise and may your spirit cover us all may your spirit cover us all with its gentle breath
go many deeds agus falter is fed roif ischach gdi an rodis tavachti ian mar riev an trur going the hele misha mar marvoher agus bertleds agus christine cormac agus shifsha mar ha shifsha ri hawachtach in san obersa agus hami de galloint dieu can make shiv sasulish ma hagen shiv shach agus hami de taut quira anavor an agus ana loider dieu agus nur a vimsha a kinding welling being the schitimini osarum agus ta arum anish eran law taut of self fearing law ele nev breede Dear friends, just welcome into our circle, our inner Anam Kirkel, our inner soul circle. And so we've been meeting, there's some of you there that have become great, great friends over the past years. But what we always do first is we ignite a candle of connection because we're scattered all over the globe. But what can unite us is this flame of energy. And as the book of Proverbs from the Jewish tradition will say, the human soul is God's flame. And so this connection is, and it's almost always as if, when we light a candle, it's almost as if we can say, all is well. When we look at a candle, it gives us great comfort and has done in all religions to light a candle, to bring in a flame. And that, of course, is so much in tune with our friend Bridget, whose name is Bro Syed, the fiery one. I'll be talking about the flame coming in on that. And of course, in the Irish tradition, that teaches us that the moment of your birth, the moment of your birth, a wax light, a wax was lit in heaven. For the journey of your life, it burns, sometimes steadily, in your moments of power and joy, sometimes flickeringly, but still irrepressible and persisting in aching dismal days. Every celestial candle will vary in size. Most candles are long, representing the length of days dealt to you. Some are small. When someone dies in Ireland, we never say, we never pronounce them starkly dead. Instead, we say, Ta Quinnel Mochte, Riff Fracker, Aunt Lay. And so, again, I'll call on an Irish poet here with a tiny little verse to bring us into this connection of flame and light. Set your love before me as a light, a candle tall. So shall I, weak prevail o'er darkness. Pass beyond all venomed things into the endless dawn, gold starred, rose pale. Lovely Noreen. Hello, everybody. My name is Hall, and I am here in County Clare near Limerick City. Noreen is on the other side of Limerick City there on the west coast of Ireland in County Limerick. And uh, for a few of these sessions, I'm going to join Noreen there in her home. She's just a half an hour drive away from here. But speaking of homes, uh, you're going to see my background change quite a lot because yesterday I moved into this house uh, here in County Clare with my wife and our seven month old baby. So I had planned to be over uh, with you, Noreen, presenting right beside you there, but my little fellow had a, a different ideas and uh, we just about got him into the bed um, before this session started. So you might you might hear him uh, squawking, you know. So um, that's what's going on here for me. I'm, I'm, I'm a poet and a singer. Um, I'm a musicologist. Um, I'm an amateur comedian, um, very amateur at times. Um, but uh, I really what I see these sessions are are just a confluence of inheritance, you know, inheriting pieces of poetry and music and insight and conversation that can we can bring out into the world, into our own lives. And uh, 
if for nothing more vacuous than good dinner conversation. But really, there's a wisdom and a confidence that we can garner from these pieces of poetry and our own creativity, dare we look it in the eye. And uh, of course, me and my brother Owen gathering around the font of knowledge, the uh, poly, poly mathematical uh, Noreen Nereen, Reverend Noreen Nereen, who, uh, who always um, is there uh, interrupting us. And we'll interrupt her too. And we'll interrupt you too, if you are brave enough to speak. And really that interruption is, uh, is what we're seeking in our lives, you know, um, whether it's interrupting loneliness or interrupting a, a kind of inertia creatively or spiritually. Um, for a long time, I, I, I lived uh, a very, um, what's the word, uh, not so spiritual life, a kind of a different type of spirituality. But music and poetry has always brought me to spaces like this. And that's really exciting for me to share with my brother Owen and Noreen and Cormac and Christine, of course, helping us out. So we'll try to have as much fun as possible and we'll all inherit and uh, we'll be like magpies taking each other's party tricks. So feel free to take all you hear here and bring it out into the world, memorize it, commit it to memory and, um, and put it in your heart. So um, I'm just going to say a quick hello now and share some poetry and maybe a song later on but this is really exciting and to think we're coming back every month we began these online um sessions you know at the beginning of the uh the the interruption of the world three years ago or so and um and it's been a, an irregular joy in my life but to have the uh, horizon of a monthly get together is a really beautiful beautiful thing so um hello from my new home and uh it's so beautiful to be in your home or wherever you find yourself today. Thanks so much, Michal. Um, yeah, so for today, I think uh, someone was asking how long we'll gather for. We'll, we, it'll be a total of maybe 90 minutes. And what we'll do now is share a little bit of context and story and song around Bridget. Um, and then we want to give you a bit of time to uh, overhear yourself say something and to introduce yourself to someone in community. So. We'll be inviting you into breakout rooms around the top of the hour, uh, groups of four, and we'll let you off for a good 20 minutes, five minutes each. So one of you will have to be a very strict timekeeper and make sure yeah, you're not the one droning on too much and that you're all ears. Um, and then uh, we'll come back and Noreen will close us out with a little ritual, blessing our a ritual of light and blessing our, our throats. And uh, afterwards, yes, we'll be sharing this recording. Uh, about 700 people or more have registered for this event. So um, there's a bunch of us here. And uh, to you, those watching and recording, you're so very welcome here as part of this. Um, I'm going to just share. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here on, uh, out on the great Niagara frontier of Western New York about 30 minutes south of the proud city of Buffalo, New York, um, and south of uh, the Great Niagara Falls, where the fresh water, the 30% of the world's fresh water falls over Niagara Falls, uh, believe it or not. And I make my home here. My, my wife grew up in this part of the world. So we're here with our son, who's a year and a half uh, now, and he's taking his midday nap uh right now so uh but what i love to share is the idea of context and space you know and in our modern lives we can become very detached from uh what's going on in the world around us you know we live in our beautifully um climate controlled homes at just the right temperature that you um that you set and we jump into our cars and we set the temperature just right and the music is just right. And then we go into these buildings, these malls and offices and places and there is no discomfort at all. It could be any time of the year um, and we don't know what's going on, you know. But the reality is we're from this world. Our bodies are in total sync with what's going on and our bodies take no notice of how delusional our little and brains think uh, we are. Our bodies are in rhythm with what's going on in the universe around us. And that's why we feel a certain sense of disconnection 
uh, from the world around us. People are yearning for some kind of connection and uh, people don't know what that is. It's extraordinary. There's amazing research these days around how loneliness uh, is actually one of the biggest killers, one of the biggest detriments to physical health is the experience of loneliness. And that experience is, I believe, such a huge, hugely connected to, to, to actually primarily disconnection, not from other people, but from the natural rhythms of the world around us, our location and our place, what's going on outside the window. So I'm going to give a little bit of context about this. And as we go through the year together in this community, in this inner soul circle, we call it a circle because the year is a great circle, you know, and the our inner life mirrors what's going on. Our, our inner world is in this uh, inverted dance with what's going on in the outer world. And so if we don't know what's going on in the outer world, we'll also be a little bewildered of what's happening within us. So throughout the year, I'll be sharing um, things that are going on in the external world. Now, many of you will know this, but many of us do not. I didn't know these things until I actually asked some questions and discovered and learned, and suddenly things started to make sense. So one of the things that is interesting is the old Celtic calendar and um, how the Celts viewed this wheel of the year, this turning of the year. So in our world today, in the Western world, we view the year around solstices and equinoxes. But we've become so detached from this that many people don't even know what a solstice or an equinox is even. So I'm going to even start right there. And so the, the solstice is the darkest and the brightest point of the year. So the darkest time of the year is December 31st. And that's for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. The brightest time of the year is around June 20th, 21st. Those are known as the solstices. And as we head toward March, March 20th, um, we hit what's called the vernal equinox. Vernal is Latin for the, um, the springtime. And equinox, from uh, we have our word equal, means it's equal day and equal night. And as we head towards the vernal equinox, the vernal equinox um, was considered the, the start of the astrological year in a lot of ancient um, calendars. And it, it's, um, uh, yeah, a part of this, this cross section. I'm just going to show you here something to kind of make a bit of sense of this. If I share this little diagram, it will show us something here now. So can you see that there, lads? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, the reason why it's brighter and darker at a certain time of the year is as we know, of course, the earth turns, causing day and night. The earth is facing the sun there, and the earth turns. And not only does it turn around, but it also goes all the way around the sun. And that would be fine. Things would be very um, easy and uh, simple if that was just the thing. But there is this very unusual thing about earth, and that's that it's tipped like a spinning top. The earth doesn't spin exactly straight. It's tipped 23 and a half degrees. And that 23 and a half degrees means in December, when we're over this side of the sun, the bottom half of the earth is more, is closer to the sun. So around December 22nd, our brothers and sisters in the Southern hemisphere feel the sun's rays more intensely. It's summertime in December in the Southern Hemisphere. But up here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're further away from the sun, so it's colder and it's darker. The sun is lower in the sky. And then you come around and we hit March. And when we're at this aspect of the sun, the days are equal. Then over here in June, up here, say you see the... US, we're closer to the sun in the northern hemisphere, so it's summertime, and in the southern hemisphere is angled away from the sun, it's further away, so it's wintertime, and it's dark until it hits around September 23rd, the other side of the sun, and then it's equal day, and it's equal night. But, 
So that's what our calendar looks like. But the Celts looked at this a little bit differently. And here I'm going to show you what they did. They did things a little bit differently. So what they wanted to do was they decided that, so in, in our calendar, we, we think that these are the most important times of the year, the points of extreme, you know. But the Celts decided that when you actually hit December 22nd or you hit March 21st or you hit June, the summer solstice or the autumn solstice, the party was over. That actually the real fun begins at the cross quarters, that that's where the real wisdom is when it comes to things changing. Things are in transition and change. Things are dynamic and moving at these four points. So here today, this is where we are, the 1st of February, okay? The 1st of February is um, the beginning of the Celtic festival of Imbolc. And the person that embodies that in Celtic, in the Celtic imagination is the figure of St. Bridget. So that's what we're going to be looking at throughout the year are these quarter points, February 1st, then May 1st, and then we have August 1st, and then Halloween is over here in between autumn and December. So what you have here is the idea of the Celtic imagination sees the world in transition, in threshold, in change. It's about the process. It's about the journey. The Celtic imagination sees the party as in the getting there. And when you hit, when you hit, when you, when you reach the destination, the party's over. You're on to the next thing. And I, that's one of the things that I love about um, getting in touch with the rhythms of nature is that the rhythms of nature teach us that change is eternal, that all is change. It's when we abstract ourselves into our own mind that we become, we hit upon the illusion or the delusion of constancy, that something's going to stay this way forever, you know, because we abstract things um, and we begin to idealize things in our own mind that aren't uh, necessary, that, that, that don't exist in the real world. The real world is all about change. The natural world shows us that change is constant. So Bridget is one of these amazing figures here in springtime. She is the, uh, the icon of threshold of change. And at this time of year, that type of change is not an easy change. And it's not necessarily a welcome change. It's a change of, um, uh, hardship, actually, you know, coming out of the winter time where food is scarce, food is still scarce in the natural world. And yet there's the promise of change to come. But the minute you start to think too much about the spring that's coming, boom, nature will hit you with another snowstorm, you know, and pull the rug from underneath you. So Bridget is about this changeability. She really shows, she teaches us to persevere she teaches us about endurance, that we must continue in the face of all hardship. And she promises that uh, good will come, that peace will uh, reign, that joy will be revealed, but only if you're up for it and if you stay the course and endure all hardships and tricks that Bridget will leave along the way. Um, I loved uh, Bridget is all, before I hand over to Mihal, I also want to point out that uh, Bridget is a great peacemaker and is known as a mediator between warring factions and kings in old Ireland. And I love this about Bridget because my master's degree was in peace and international relations, peace studies, and I'm a great uh, enthusiast, a hobbyist when it comes to international relations. I have a load of books. I read about it all the time. And I love um, international relations and how um, the grand narrative of history, you know, flows and seeing patterns in history. And Bridges is this amazing figure of mediation, getting in between warring nations and being able to mediate and come up with a solution to these things. And one of the stories that's told about her is that as these two armies two great armies in Ireland were lining up for battle. Bridget intervened and she 
sprinkled her magic dust and put the two armies to sleep. And as the two armies were sleeping, she further uh, she further then um, cast her magic and caused all the soldiers to dream that they had won the battle. And so then when the armies woke up, they dusted themselves off and turned around and marched home victorious, delighted in the belief that they had all won the battle themselves. So there's a great, um, a great lesson there when it comes to mediation, because if you look at the history of, of the world, every war does has to end in a mediation, in a negotiation. Um, that's the only way that a, a forward and people can um, delay that as long as they want. But yet that is the point that must come. Another, which is Bridget all over, like it, you, you must endure to get to this point of peace. Uh, this point of magic, this point of um, of revelation that will come. And one of the great, and, and Bridget's part of this great movement in Ireland, the great acknowledgement of the power of women in particular in bringing peace and in bringing change. And throughout Irish history, there have been these extraordinarily powerful women who have been um, bringers of great social change going way back to the Brehan laws in Ireland, where women enjoyed all sorts of, um, they enjoyed all sorts of legal statuses that women do not enjoy in most parts of the world and only very recently in our modern world. Um, but there have been examples of these women throughout Irish history. And one of my favorites from contemporary Irish history is a woman called Mary Robinson. And Mary Robinson was the first president, uh, elected president of Ireland. And she went on to become the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and was extremely controversial in that role. Um, and she has since uh, tired, uh, she, she was then appointed more recently as a mediator for uh, bringing peace in the Great Lakes region of Africa. Again, the first woman to be appointed as United Nation, Nations mediator in that role. Um, but she wrote this wonderful biography, autobiography of her life called Everybody Matters. And there's a great quote from that that I'll leave you with. And she talks about human rights and she says that human rights are inscribed in the hearts of people. Human rights are inscribed in the hearts of people. They were there long before lawmakers drafted their first proclamation. Human rights are inscribed in the hearts of people. And they were there long before lawmakers drafted their first proclamation. So all that to say, uh, yeah, we're beginning this community, this community that honors the rights of every person that are written in their heart. Because I know that people who are attracted to this work um, need it for self-nourishment and self-fulfillment in order that we go back out that door to our families and to our neighbors and to our communities and to our countries and to our world in a way that can be of service and in a way that stands up to injustice and says, no, human rights were written on your heart long before any proclamation gave them to you. You know, So Bridget will, uh, she'll fill our sails as we embark in this uh, voyage together. Michal. That's lovely, Owen. That's lovely. Um, in Ireland, you know, as as children, when when we go to school, we we have to weave these uh, crosses, kind of Celtic crosses out of rushes. And rushes are a great symbol of, 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 of birth and new life returning as they begin to grow and show us that uh, that the world has turned. So, but I have to tell you now that if you go up, <clears throat> if you go up to an Irish person and say, isn't St. Bridget the midwinter saint, they will look at you like you've got two heads because we're obsessed that St. Bridget's Day is the beginning of spring. And that's a fact in Ireland, you know, that's a fact. And, uh, but, you know, we called this the midwinter saint because in a sense, that beginning of spring is a Celtic imaginary threshold. In, in the Western, you know, astrological calendar, it is still mid-winter, you know. So 
I have to just say that, you know, calling Bridget the Midwinter Saint is uh, an invention that we have uh, invented, a title we have invented for this particular event. And uh, I suppose it's in the it's it's the version of Celtic spiritual clickbait, really, uh, that we've that we've kind of set a trap for you to come in and do that. But, you know, on the Internet, you have to do these things. You know, you have to kind of, you know, shock people. But don't take that bit out into the world unless you've got the the old uh, Celtic imagination shtick to to give it just like Owen Owen gave us there. And um, but in so the beginning of spring and I saw actually a girl walk, walk mindlessly out in front of me in traffic with her little uh, um, her little cross of rushes made in school. And it was excellently done. You could tell she had an artistic flair, not only from the little cross that she was holding, but also the way she just kind of uh, absent mindedly walked into traffic. But um, but so yesterday on the radio as well, there's a great song in Ireland and the Irish tradition. Um, and it's the beginning of summer. It's kind of like the Irish language, Irish traditional version of um, summertime, the great American uh, song, Summertime, you know. Do you know the way sometimes maybe if you've been unlucky, you he you've heard the song Summertime sung in the cold part of the year and there's just something kind of very unsettling about it it's one of those seasonal tunes like the autumn leaves you can't really sing that great jazz autumn leaves in summertime um only if you're a uh, very brave really but um so saura saura the irish language word for summer which is on the way now with saint bridget um is saura a beautiful word and uh so i'll give you a blast of that song and i heard it on the radio and i learned it from noreen and but uh, there's a great modern version by Irla O'Linord and the band The Gloaming um, and that was on the radio yesterday. All of the radio DJs are falling all over themselves to play this song these days in uh, or around this time in Ireland. So I'll just sing one or two verses for you and um, and then maybe share a poem or two. So this is called Saura Saura, Summer of Summer. Saura, saura, banya na nauna, hoga mar hain an saura ling. Saura bui o lina greina, hoga mar hain an saura ling. Bobog na bjaltana maiden an taurig, so a sun gnog is she a sun clown. Kalini mashach a bon yellow glister, hoga mar hain an saura ling. Saura saura banyan an auna. Hoga mar hain an saura ling Saura bui o lina greina Hoga mar hain an saura ling Hoga mar hain an saura ling Hoga mar hain an saura ling Kalini ma sech abon yalla glista we bring the summer with us. It's one of my favorite songs to sing. And uh, now is the season. And... Um, one of the things that I try to push myself to do um, in this community is to try out new things. So, as I said, I'm a poet and a singer and a, a musicologist. I studied music in third level education and uh, musicology, the whys, whats, whens, wheres of music. And um, that brought me very close to many different traditions, both Western and popular and traditional and world musics. And I often think that, you know, inheriting the music from Noreen and putting our own spin on it. When Noreen teaches us a song, she always says, and sure, make your own of it. Make your own of it. So, and that's our message to you and even to ourselves in the early part of memorization or study as well. We have to uh, make our own of it. 
So I have a poem that I've written unpublished and I'm reciting it for the first time here today and it's called A Playful Prayer and it's after a poet and a great Irish poet uh, who's passed away now called Brendan Kennelly. Now Brendan Kennelly was a very playful fellow and a, 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 an old friend of Noreen's actually and our father and uh, a great man of letters, a professor in Trinity College in Dublin for many years. And um, I don't think we ever met him. Maybe I did when I was like very, very young child. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But, uh, but he's a great inspiration and he really has the banner poem, um, the banner poem for St. Bridget. And many poem poets have lent their hand to a translation of Saint, a prayer attributed to St. Bridget, the historical St. Bridget. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to read uh, Brendan Kennelly's version. And really, I was inspired by that trickster energy that is attributed to Bridget. Uh, I'm surprised there hasn't been any technical glitches here yet um, that we could blame Bridget for. But maybe she maybe I've jinxed it now and there's something going to going to happen. But uh, I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. But uh, this is called St. Bridget's Prayer, and it's by Brendan Kennelly. I'd like to give a lake of beer to God. I'd love the heavenly hosts to be tippling there for all eternity. I'd love the men of heaven to live with me. To dance and sing. If they wanted, I'd put at their disposal vats of suffering. White cups of love I'd give them with a heart and a half. Sweet pitchers of mercy I'd offer to every man. I'd make heaven a cheerful spot because the happy heart is true. I'd make the men of heaven contented for their own sake and I'd like Jesus to love me too. I'd like the people of heaven to gather from all the parishes around. I'd give a special welcome to the women, the three Marys of great renown. I'd sit with the men, the women and God, there by the lake of beer. We'd be drinking good health forever. And every drop would be a prayer. I'd sit with the men, the women and God there by that lake of beer we'd be drinking good health forever and every drop would be a prayer and i always grew up hearing noreen recite that and i'm still chipping away at committing it to memory noreen it's much uh, more difficult than, than <laughs> it seems when you're listening to it to actually memorize it so noreen has a great uh, memory for quotes and res reciting poems um I'm not sure if it's a photographic memory you'd have, Noreen, but or if it's kind of an or an aural kind of a skill. But um, but anyway, I'm still I'm still definitely trying to catch up. I suppose my my iPhone riddled brain is is not exactly standing up to uh, to the to the tests of being a poet. But sure, look, you have to just keep battling on, don't you? But <laughs> what I did do is I wrote a poem. This is a first draft. That's not a, an apology. It's not an apology. Um, and it's called A Playful Prayer. And I dedicated it to Brendan Kennelly. And I will read that for you now. And dedicate it to yourself. I'd like to recite a playful prayer. One where my God's the same as yours. Where we can trace the gilded cracks in our hearts to resemble a river delta. I'd like this prayer to be so powerful that it acts as a gift card to God, to use whenever she so pleases and will think of me maybe when she spoils herself. <laughs> For I'm from a land of goddesses, tricksters and jealous ones who inhabit lakes and caves, who are at home in stories. Let this prayer blur those lines. Let it tell truths slant. And so, in the carefree chapter of life, let my prayer be playful, 
Let this prayer punctuate petitions of panic and tragedy, songs we are too soon to sing. For this world is made of now, and now is made of me, and today I choose to play like a child living valiantly. I'll choose truth over dare, and I'll fly in the face of despair. For I'm from a land of goddesses, tricksters, and the jealous ones who inhabit lakes and caves, who are at home in stories. Let this player, let this prayer blur those lines. Let it tell truths slant. A little nod to Dickinson there, knowing they'll have to give us that. And so in the carefree chapter of life, let my prayer be playful. Let this prayer punctuate petitions of panic and tragedy. Songs we are too soon to sing, for this world is made of now, and now is made of me, and today I choose to play, like a child living valiantly. I'll choose truth over dare, and I'll fly in the face of despair. Mm, beautiful. Oh, well done, Michal, that's wonderful. And uh, just recently, before I go on to tell you about Bridget, um, picking up on the lads. That's why I love, you know, working with these two. Or it's not working, it's playing with these two, like, like that poem there. Because they always bring up things in my mind that I would never have thought of saying. You know, that um, Brendan Kennelly, I met a friend of his recently. And he was telling me that how he himself and Brendan were walking down Grafton Street one day. Years ago, now this is years ago. And this woman, this young girl approached uh, Brendan and she said, Brendan, can I, you're the poet, would you ever write a limerick for me? And Brendan said, I will. And he said, uh, where are you from? Brendan said to her. And she said, I'm from Rathmines. So Brendan thought a minute and he said, there was a young girl from Rathmines who wrote a limerick of two lines. Will that took you <laughs> <laughs> well, she had, had a great, you know. Oh, and I loved what you see, me Hall. I'd sit with the men, the women of God, but I well, loved how you changed it and God. Well, <laughs> I actually lifted that text from the Brendan Kennelly official Twitter page, and it's a screenshot. So I wonder, Noreen, which is which, but I know that you have it right, but I saw it and I took it from the estate of Brendan Kennelly, who share screenshots. Um, so. Right. Yeah, uh, I, it was I have it here. Well. I have the original here in his uh, in his collection. But anyway, it's, Twitter, I, it, Twitter it, can it, go. Twitter can go with the wind. Fake but it, like it, fake works, it works well. It works well. The men, men, the women, and God. I and think God. I, I kind of prefer. I think I'll make my own of it. Actually, Brendan wouldn't mind. So. <laughs> and making your our own of it too. Yeah, you see, we have to be doing that with Bridget too. You know. Oh, and, oh and I must tell you another story. I was telling that, I was sharing that um, story about the, the two armies in um, in uh, falling asleep. <laughs> and one woman put up her hand and she said, weren't they very stupid men? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was a lovely reaction too. <laughs> um, so I'm going to sh start sharing my screen hey, now. But, do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where am I at all, at all now? Where are you? Um, I have to get, hold on a minute. Hey, Nor to... so you'll, you'll share now a bit and then we're going to. Uh... Yes, hopefully now I, I, I will, cause I have a load to share, lad, but I'll try it. I'll try my best. Now, why, why can't I share my desktop? Why, why is can't it not... you share your desktop? Oh, did you close yours? Um, I should be sharing my own desktop now. Well. Uh, have you uh... yeah share no i only see your desktop one that i normally don't see now so i'm trying to share my own desktop because i have Hang on a minute. let me uh let me do this Hang on a sec. michal jinxed it yeah you <laughs> here try okay try it now Nora. right share screen ha <laughs> ha I don't know exactly where that little fella disappeared. Yeah. Anyway, oh. so three days, three days are so important. I love these three days. Today, Bridget, tomorrow, Candlemas, 
or Groundhog Day, as he called it in America, and then the Feast of St. Blaise. And so if I go now, first of all, maybe I'll, I'll go to the play from the start there now. Great, lovely, here we are. And so, law ele breed fe vasha yeve. That's what we say in Irish. Do you want to try it? Law ele breed fe vasha yeve, which is happy oh. Bridget's day. And so, Bridget, then, who was she at all at all? Now, we'll be making our own of her because she's the most complex figure. And there are so many theories. Some say the goddess never existed. Some say Bridget never existed. I think probably the most plausible, the one I believe in, is a lovely uh, theory by a man called Dahi O'Hogan. And he says that probably the goddess Bridget tended at a temple in dedicated to the goddess Bridget. And that then this historical fi figure introduced Christianity to Ireland. Anyway, so I'm talking about the Christian saint now. Um, I'll talk about the goddess in a minute. So she was born 452, died 524. So that's the reason why we're hopping up and down. This is 1,500 years after her death. Very complex history of this Christian saint. Her father was a man called Dohuk. You'll hear all sorts of crazy uh, pronunciations. And her mother was a slave that, um, that uh, Dohuk had. And he liked her and he liked her too much. And they she became pregnant. But of course, the wife, Berkness, was furious, naturally. And so she tried. She said, listen, this girl must go. We must sell her on. So uh, Duhak says, OK, I'll sell her on. Um, but then a druid foretells what a special girl this is going to be. And so Duhak sells the slave, but not the infant in her womb. So then... When she was sold on to um, a Leinster druid and he, um, uh, uh, so then she, a, a queen of that, a king and a queen came to a party that this Leinster druid was holding. And the queen is also heavily pregnant. And so a fella or a wise man there makes a pronouncement. He said that the child born at dawn will be the genius, will be the greatest. So didn't the queen give birth to her child in the middle of the night? And Bridget's um, mother, Brickshock, was carrying a pail of buttermilk over the threshold of that druid's house. And didn't she give birth to Bridget on the threshold at exactly at dawn? So not only, I forgot to tell you then, not only the Queen's child was he born, but uh, it was, I think it was a little girl, so I can't remember now, but she, he or she was dead. So they took the little baby Bridget to the little dead infant and she breathed on it. And that was the first miracle. The little child came back to life. Um, so Bridget is that threshold figure. And we, that's a very interesting place to be too. Bridget was born on a Wednesday, the eighth lunar day, the eighth day after the moon at Fahart in Dundalk. And I was just there actually over the weekend. And I think there's probably a few joining to who were there also uh, celebrating that place of her birth. And um, so then she, she was returned then actually to Duhok because he really wanted Duhok and um, Berknet they had seven sons, but of course, it was quite a, a matriarchal society. So they were very anxious to have a daughter. So Bridget was returned to the book. But so all sorts of, um, there are three lives of Bridget ranging from um, the 12th century um, Lower Gowala Eirn up to um, the Lower Brack in the 15th century. So we know quite a bit about her um, and her her miracles and all that. And um, so little miracles like Owen mentioned sending people to sleep. But one time her father, the work was um, organizing a little party for five people and he had five portions of food. And Bridget saw this little dog who was very hungry. So she said, come on, come on, come on. So she gave him one portion and then she gave the dog a second portion. And the work came out and he said, um, there's something strange here. And she said, oh, no, count. And he counted five portions. That was happening again and again and again. 
Um, then, of course, she was sold to the King of Leinster, and that came, that's how she came down to the Kildare area. And so as a very um, holy girl, one time she was remarried, but she plucked out her eye to make herself um, unattractive. And so this Bishop Mel, then there's stories, of course, about her that we're all told in school. And I see Nessa and so many people on there that would be telling about Bridget when she wants to found her monastery in Kildare. She goes along to the king and she's he looks at her and he's kind of, you know, eyeing her. And she says, I want some land. And he says, yeah, OK, I'll give you as much land as that cloak on your back will cover. And so she took off the cloak and four angels came and they spread it all right out over the Curra of Kildare. So that was her monastery was there. Um, so she is, of course, she has aspects then of the pre-Christian um, goddess, which are healing because in the old um, mythology, there were three bridges. And one was a goddess of healing, one was a goddess of poetry, and one was a goddess of smithscraft, which is all about fire. So this is a very important time for fire, for um, um, that notion of um, the power of fire in moulding ourselves. You know, when you go to um, mould something, you apply fire to it. And then fire is very connected with her because when she was a small child in her home, people saw her home on fire and they went along and she, she was perfectly safe. Um, so another sign of her sanctity. Then at her consecration, there she was consecrated by a bishop called Mel and apparently he was drunk. And so he consecrated her as a bishop. So she really is a bishop. And then lovely stories, of course, about fire again. Uh, one time she's en route to um, Jerusalem. And uh, Mary and Jesus are en route to Jerusalem. And these soldiers come out and say, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. And Mary calls them Bridget because they were great pals. In fact, Bridget is called Mirra Noel in Ireland, Mary of the Irish. So Mary calls and Bridget said, Biddy, come here, I need your help. And Bridget appears with this candelabra of lighted candles. And of course, the soldiers are mesmerized and they're looking up, up, up. And Mary and Jesus slip through. And then so Mary looks back at Bridget and she said, thank you, Bridget. From now on, your feast day will be before mine. So that's why February the 1st is before the feast of Mary, which is tomorrow. 19 nuns, the fire, of course, of, of Bridget is very well known now, which goes right back to her convent, the original convent where she had 19 nuns and they were, that made, made 20 with herself. And they tended the fire for 20 nights. And when Bridget died, they said, the 19 nuns said, Grand, we'll do it now on the 20th. It's your night, Bridget. Come and do that. And of course, last night, you see, we're meeting, we really should be meeting on the eve yesterday, because last night was the night you would have left your, um, your little brass out and you would have left the door open so that she'd come in and she'd leave her little imprint on the ashes there. I'm going to move on there now because we're running out of time. So the cross, of course, exactly. This is my little one, Miha, that you were talking about. This is the little, the little the little sad one that I kind of made myself yesterday and I have it for your new home Michal, to take oh, over. thanks and I also have your broths but I'll tell you about that in a minute and um, so this little one is just you can see it there it's got the four angles coming out of it so the four symbols north south east and west Bialtna, Imbolc, Lona, and Samhain and so on earth air fire and water day night month and year very symbolic. And in the centre there is that centre is the eye of God, as many of the crosses will also say. And so try them, try it yourself. There are plenty of uh, examples on YouTube and you just weave in the events of the past year. My mother used to always say that she was a teacher and she'd say, weave in any little sorrows that you have. She'd be telling the children and so on. And here is the broth then that I left out last night. I left two out because I knew you wouldn't leave one. I have one for you. 
Um, and this has all got to do with the dew. The dew is very important in Ireland um, and drought, as we call it. So I left this out last night um, on the windowsill, brought it in, and then you rub your face with that dew. And it's the best moisturizer you'll ever pay, get. You could pay millions for it. Healing properties throughout the year too, and um, because you keep that here, and you'd if you get a migraine or um, sore throats or anything like that, that you would just apply your little broth breeder, your little um, cloak, your little mantle. But you have to replace it now this time next year at this the eve and burn it. Other symbols then are milk, um, honey. It's lovely local honey here, lads that have just started making this local honey. Lovely. Uh, they were telling me in the shop today. And uh, of course you had the plurine schnachte. These are the uh, snowdrops that come out at this time. And a great, uh, Owen was talking about um, Bridget being a great symbol of resilience. And I suppose that's why the snowdrop is associated with it. That comes out at this time. Here's a lovely little poem that we'd be put up for you by an American poet. She was uh, um, born in 1943, Louise Gluck, Snowdrop. Do you know what I was? How I lived? You know what despair is? Then winter should have meaning for you. Then winter should have meaning for you. I did not expect to survive. Earth suppressing me. I didn't expect to waken again, to feel in damp earth, my body able to respond again. Remembering after so long, how to open again in the cold light of earliest spring. I didn't expect to survive earth suppressing me. I didn't expect to waken again, to feel in damp earth, my body able to respond again. Remembering after so long, how to open again in the cold light of earliest spring. Jesus, we've all felt it, haven't we? Afraid, yes, but among you again, crying, yes, risk joy in the raw wind of the new world. I love that poem, lads. It says an awful lot to me. This is Chris. Another great tradition that was this long Chris was made of straw and then you walked through this and here's a poem that Seamus Heaney wrote about the ritual that is around it. This is from Crossings, Seamus Heaney. On St. Bridget's Day, the new life could be entered by going through her, her girdle of straw rope, by going through Bridget's girdle of straw rope. The proper way for men was right leg first, then right arm and right shoulder, head, then left shoulder, arm and leg. Women drew it down over the body and stepped out of it. The open they came into by these moves stood opener. A new life. The open they came into by these moves stood opener. Hoops came off the world. They could feel the February air still soft above their heads. And imagine the limp rope fray and flare like wind-borne gleanings, or, this is beautiful, an unhindered goldfinch over ploughland, an unhindered goldfinch over ploughland. So let, just a little word then before I go back to the lads again about Imbolc, because of course this is the time of Imbolc to that pre-Christian festival. And you know, Owen, I, I don't know if I agree with you entirely about, yeah, well, I do agree with you, I, I, I know the cross quarter there, but I really believe it was the Celtic imagination being disobedient and saying, Ara, feck it, we're not going to go with the winter solstice. That's too boring altogether. Let's be imaginative about all of this. And so here we are in Imbolc, when the fields, of course, are barren and they become the womb of the goddess then. So the earth is now about to be penetrated. And of course, in Greek mythology, as you'd know, the time of Demeter, the goddess of fertility, and she's searching the barren fields for Persephone, her daughter, who's been stolen away by Pluto. And so the young girls, they simulate, you know, this, in, in, in Greece by carrying lighted candles, lighted torches 
around the now barren fields which are waiting to be planted. A great time of purification for us, of decluttering, getting rid of so much, doing our spring cleaning. Birds begin to appear and mate. I had some lovely doves. Do you know the doves I have here, lads? Yeah, in, and they're, they were chasing one another around today. And one, one little fellow was very bold. He was chasing three or four girls at the one time. And of course, there's your um, little snowdrops, your plurine schnachte, and somebody who's an expert on these, because there are several species of these, is called a galanthophile. There you are. Of course, all the time of the da dandelions. I love the dandelion, the image of the dandelion, because the, the yellow in it represents the sun, the yellow leaves before they turn into the what are they called? The puffballs. And then the puffballs are like the stars. And then the center, too, is like the moon. I always think it's lovely. Of course, Dandelion, all from Don de Leon. So, what can we take away from Bridget? And this is very, very rushed now and everything. The happy heart is true. That line from Brendan Kennelly's um, poem The happy heart is true. So, if we can try to keep our little hearts happy happy as we can generosity of course towards the poor she was always giving away stuff to the poor a woman came one time with a basket of apples and gave them to her and Bridget immediately started handing out the apples and the woman was furious and Bridget said would you would you stop what's mine is theirs peacemaker of course as Owen said uh, turn back the streams of war we need her very badly for these times her diet was bread Honey she liked and milk she had to have when she was a very small baby. She had to have the milk from a white cow with red ears. And then I'd like to leave, I'd like to give a lake of beer to God. Um, apparently beer was very popular in old Ireland because the water wouldn't have been safe to drink. And it wasn't, it wasn't an intoxicating beer, but certainly one time Bridget um, healed her nurse with some beer. Be a bright flame yourself, the flame of Bridget. Spread your cloak around and see the miracles that will happen too. And balancing your opposites. You see, Bridget is a very important figure on that. The retrieval, as Owen says, of the divine feminine there. And now we have a, um, a bank holiday to her, so she's equal now to Patrick as well. I've still a small crib in that it doesn't actually happen on St. Bridget's Day. So it's not happening today as it does happen always on March the 17th. But it's happening next Monday. But, she, but we do have that symbol of opposites too, that she's a great um, figure of the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine in all our lives. Um, oh, and I hope I haven't gone over too much now there on that. Lovely, uh, lovely beautiful. I know, sure, there's so much to say, isn't there? <laughs> there's... No, I'll stop sharing now and go back now to my... <clears throat> no, yeah. Yeah. There's just so much to, to say and to share. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's unbelievable, which is why you'll have to join us for the year and we'll be able to spend, uh, we'll be able to spend some real quality time diving deep into all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, because every season, Owen has its figures, you know, male and female too, you know. So we'd be talking about Patrick, Francis, Teresa of Avila, all the great saints, Mirabai from India. Um, so we'll delve into them all, give them all a voice. Yeah, that's right. And we love the old American mystic Emily Dickinson as well. Oh, yeah, a great devotee. Um, because he, that, this is her... This inner circle really is it's her motto, the soul selects her own society and shuts the door. This is what we'll be doing. And now what we love to do at, at every session is to invite you into a little conversational space. And as always, I like to just remind us that if you're feeling a little reluctant, that's totally appropriate. Uh, it's the same as if you're wanting to go to 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 work out or start that diet you know no one really wants to jump into it but does anybody regret it afterwards you know so uh we're going to break you out into groups of three or four um for uh i think we'll just go for 15 minutes christine if that's okay we'll just go for 15 minutes and so if you can watch your time and only just and just share a little bit just about yourself and what 
what you've heard so far in this session that has interested you or that has inspired you or has provoked you a little bit. And just overhear yourself reflecting on this. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. And these breakout rooms are just as good as being face to face with someone when it comes to this dynamic of just allowing the words to come out of your mouth. So we're going to do that and come back and then Noreen will have a little ritual to send us off after that. So Christine, you will um, you will set us up and off we go and we'll be back in 15 minutes. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Lovely. Well, welcome back, everybody. And our time is our time is nearly up. We might go a little over over time as Noreen leads us into a ritual for this time of year. But we just wanted to thank you all for being here um, at this very exciting time and we'll be in touch. Uh, we'll be sending on a recording of this and uh, please it would be an honor if you join us for this membership circle with the founding members rate, which will be open until midnight. Uh, so there's a founding members code on the link there. I think Cormac has been sharing it too. So if you enter that in, there's 20% off of uh, the membership circle and please pass it on too. If there's anyone you think that would be interested in this, please pass it on. It would be an honor to have friends and to get this out by by word of mouth. So we will see you down the road. Wonderful to see all the familiar names here on the list. Uh, sending big hugs to you all and to all our new friends. Looking forward to our paths crossing. Karamila Mahaga. Summertime is coming and the trees are sweetly blooming and the wild mountain thyme grows around the bloom and heather will you go lassie go and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain thyme all around the bloom and heather will you go lassie go thanks for joining us everybody we'll see you next month and of course this is the lovely time because tomorrow you have great treats in store too because tomorrow is candlemas our groundhog day um uh, which came in i think through the germans in pennsylvania so tomorrow they'll be hopping up and down twenty thousand people over uh, to uh hooks uh, i can't remember the name of the day Hots Hots and 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 lovely exactly um and then of course um, so Candlemas is the day that we celebrate candles and all our candles are blessed here in the Christian tradition. Um, and then, of course, the third which I want to focus in on, which is a feast of St. Blaise, who's patron saint of throats, an Armenian saint who died in 316. And apparently a woman went to him one time with her little child who had um, a, a chicken bone stuck in his throat. So that's how he became to, to known. But lots about him that I was going to share too. But time has run out on us. So I want to do a little ritual with you around St. Blaise that you can do yourselves. And so it's in the figure of an eight. I'm going to go back here now to my, to my hopefully you'll be able to see where I'm going now. And so here you're going to set up your two candles. Your two, can you see this on? Yeah. Yes, yeah, looks great. So you have your two candles here and you're going to set them up on either side of you. And um, when you go to church, they will put unlighted candles there. But it's so much nicer to walk through lighted candles. And so we're going to walk through now. And as you're walking through, you're going to let go of all your worries. Enter into this space. Then walk through your candles and now turn to your left, which is Umpodesho. Put your hands on your throat. And in your own mind, be grateful for all that you have said in the past. Forgive yourself, too, for all the dark words that you may have said. And now walk around, as I say, in the figure of eight. And come back into your centre again. And also, 
offer another prayer, maybe for somebody you're thinking of, might be ill. Then walk through your candles again, and now turn to your right. And so turn to your right and place your hands on your throat again. And now you are praying for the year to come, the times to come, and praying for the grace to always find the right words, the words that will enable yourself and enable others towards the good. And then walk around the other side to create that circle of eight. Eight is so important a number for Bridget, whose feast day it is today. And now come and stand in the centre again. Walk through and now place your hands on your throat again, looking forward. And you're now praying for discernment for the year ahead. And again, giving thanks. We're also praying, of course, as we always do in any ritual for our troubled world. And that the energy that we created together, as the Buddhist idea believes, that we're sending out energy out into the world. And so we end our little ritual. I'll ask you maybe to stand wherever you are. And we have three patron saints in Ireland. Patrick, Bridget, that we're celebrating today, and Columba. And so we'll end with a little, that little Larica, breastplate of Columba, Column Kill, and you can say it after me. Be a bright flame before me. Be a bright, bright flame before me. Be a guiding star above me. Be a guiding star above me. Be a steady path beneath me. Be a steady path beneath me. Be a guiding shepherd behind me. Be a guiding shepherd behind me. Today. Today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And a year from today. And a year from today. And indeed, that blessing for you until we meet again. could extinguish your candles now until we meet again and keep that flame in your heart, sending it out into the world for peace and love and compassion. Amen. See you all soon.